This podcast is brought to you by Marcus Rodriguez. If you're looking to buy or sell your home in this competitive market, look no further than Marcus Rodriguez. That kind of rhymed unintentionally. You can find him at www.myrealtormarcus.com or email him at info at myagentmarcus.com. Once again, if you're looking to buy or sell your house in this competitive market, please look no further than Marcus Rodriguez. His number is 209-554-1715. Once again, it's 209-554-1715. This podcast is also brought to you by Alien, a new fitness wear company on a mission to support mental health. Alien features high-quality men and women's activewear designed to help you reach your goals both in and out of the gym. There are over 7 billion people on Earth, many that struggle with anxiety, depression, suicidal thoughts, or just feeling like you have no one that cares. If you feel this way, just know, you are not alone. A percentage of all sales goes Sales and proceeds are donated to suicide awareness and prevention. Please shop alien.org. All right, once again, you guys, let's give it up for our sponsors, Marcus Rodriguez and Tanner Dodson. If anybody's interested in becoming a sponsor of Real Talk and whatnot, please message me. Find me on Instagram, social media. My phone number is 209-769-4596. Just let me know. We can get something started. All righty. Once again, you guys, thanks for tuning in to Real Talk and Whatnot. I'm your host, Mike Daly. And if you're new to this podcast, this is a show where I highlight the talented individuals who live within the Central Valley of California, as well as people in general who are passionate about what they do. If you're watching this on YouTube, make sure you like, subscribe, and give the video a thumbs up. If you're listening to this on a podcast app, make sure you're downloading every single episode. If you're listening to this on Apple Podcasts, then make sure that you can leave a comment so I can know, or leave a review so I can know why you guys like this show and everything everything else like that. Alrighty, let's jump into today's episode. Now today I am joined by a young lady by the name of Taya Noel. Now Taya is a musician and she has a really unique style. I haven't yet to seen too many of this type of style come out of the 209 and I was just so happy I could get her on my podcast. You may have seen her perform at the Mainzer, at Dust Bowl, or anywhere else in the 209. She's always performing almost every single week in somewhere or every single week somewhere and she's just a really cool girl and very talented individual. I'm glad I got to interview her, ask about her most recent project that she dropped episodes, and just figure out her musical process and her creative process and why, uh, just how she creates the music that she does create. So please, ladies and gentlemen, without further ado, please give it up for Taya Noel. This is it. Real talk. What not? This song's called Naps because I never fucking sleep. Ladies and gentlemen, thanks for tuning in to Real Talk and Whatnot. And today, my guest is Taya Noel. Here she is performing her song Naps off her EP episodes. Taya? Let that shit rip. Take advantage of a slow day. I'm feeling kinda low. I got nothing to do tonight. And nowhere to go. I guess I could watch a movie. The kind you used to like. We stay up late and watch the sunrise. Oh. I need these midday dreams to make reality seem clear Cause when I speak you barely hear me I could be still, stay behind my eyes It might take a lot of pills to make me feel like you're still near me It's going fine I guess it's been two weeks since you left Should probably get some rest Before I start over again My bedroom is so messy It never gets this bad Hope you never forget me And all the times we had and all I need is midday dreams to make reality seem clear Cause when I speak you barely hear me I could be still, stay behind my eyes It might take a lot of pills to make me feel like you're still near me To make me feel like you're still near me
That's dope. Thank you. Thank you. How you doing, Taya Noel? Doing good. So, why don't you introduce yourself for people who, you know, may not know who you are, who this, uh, what is, it, what, is that a cow hat? What is that? What would you describe that as? Yeah, these are, these are called, I think they're like bucket hats. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Real trendy right now. But dude, literally protects you from a sunburn. Guaranteed. Oh, yeah. Takes your body temperature. It feels like down like. They're pretty thick, huh? It's just like, I don't know, for me personally, it's super shady. Mm-hmm. I'm super shady. <laughs> I feel like I would just sweat in one of those. Like, yeah, it's but good. I also sweat. Like it's a good way to now. like give the impression that like <laughs> I don't want to. <laughs> you could just be like, oh, yeah. like <laughs> if you wanted to put a mask on too, you'd be really. Oh freaking. my god, totally, <laughs> dude. I know exactly, dude. I feel like this is an evolution toward all of the all of the people that struggle with just. That mm-hmm. well, I yeah, that's uh, hate I was, going into like stores already. So to hide my identity, <laughs> excellent. I know. play like superhero like. I remember ideas in my like head. at the beginning of like before the pandemic, I was like everyone was like you can't wear masks inside. I just remember that like not not like mask mask, but like you know what I mean. You couldn't wear like a, a mask covering your face. Oh, right. You know what I mean. And then to, COVID like, happened. It's like you better like cover mm-hmm. your face. And everyone's faces are like crazy covered, and I was just like. Mysterious. Man, it'd be a, you would think it'd be the prime time to rob a bank, huh? <laughs> I mean, it's just like I'm already here. <laughs> like I've already done. You're not gonna know who, who did it. <laughs> <laughs> he was wearing a mask. Yeah. Oh, shoot. <laughs> okay, that narrows it down to uh, everybody in the bank at the, at the time of the. <laughs> oh, so uh, who are you? <laughs> <laughs> oh wow! Full kidding. circle, full yeah. circle. It makes sense, though. I get it. Um, I'm Taya Noel. Um, I'm a musician in Central Valley. Um, mm-hmm. Right up to two oh nine. Two oh nine, dude. Um, I love it. It's just I feel like I'm gonna be. I'll be the. I'll be the first to say it. No, I'm not the first to say it. But two oh nine is definitely like becoming a more evolving oh, community and a more collective yeah. like thing. Like I'll rep it. Dude, no, I seriously. And it's just like, I, yeah, I feel like more than ever, though, I've seen like more and more artists coming out than I've ever seen in my life. At least I don't know if I was, just wasn't aware of it. You know what I mean? But I also feel like, I don't know, I feel like COVID, yeah, was a bad thing. I always say this, but after COVID, it kind of made everyone appreciate stuff a little bit more. And I think like just since people have been coming out of COVID, like there's been just a light, more lightheartedness about just being out. Yeah, I think generally, I think that's the general consensus. I mean, but still, it depends on where you are at. Yeah. And what's going on in your life can't speak for that's everyone. That's true. That's <laughs> true. Yeah. Hard times for <laughs> like. Yeah. I know, but I'm. Just, <laughs> this is true. This hopefully is true. not for you. No, hopefully not for you guys out there. <laughs> But why don't you introduce yourself after that beautiful (laughs) (laughs) introduction? Oh my gosh, you set me up so well. What up? I'm Taya Noel. Um, How would you describe me? I'm really curious. I would describe you. like Honestly, so this is the way I described to people when I was like, oh, I have this girl, Taya, coming on. I was like, she's like, look at this this indie looking chick. Like, I was, I don't know. She's like a hipster looking and she has like, uh, I don't know what I would say, indie music. I know that's. I don't know if that's what you would call oh, it. I throw it in there. Yeah, sometimes. yeah, yeah. Indie, indie I'll type of music. Be, yeah, but you almost like have not. People understand I feel like you what almost, that means. Now. Yeah, but I also <laughs> feel like you almost have like. Uh, I mean, you do have bars in your songs. You know what I mean? But it's almost like uh, like the the song you're gonna play at the end of the podcast. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> but you had it's pretty barsy in there. I was like, oh, this is yeah, I was fitting bars yeah. <laughs> in the future. <laughs> so then, how did you, how did this all come to be? You know, how did you start spitting bars? <laughs> yeah. Oh my gosh, um, I don't know. I guess um, my songs were always kind of different in a sense that I didn't know how to create hooks yet when I first started, mm-hmm. or like I didn't know what a chorus or anything like. So it was kind of train of thought music already. And you can kind of hear that it, like sometimes there's no like repeating element or whatever. It's just kind of like sung poetry. Sorry, you're laughing. I had <laughs> no. Stuff. All right. Was it? Um, yeah, no like recurring like catchy like tunes necessarily, but like you go back and it's kind of train of thought. So I just started like 
think it started with like doing like spoken word, like actual poems mm-hmm. within the songs that you can hear in some of my earlier tracks that um, I guess just kind of evolved to that just took on a more mm-hmm. musical touch. So I just started like rapping and I love hip hop music. And no, it's a good, know. it's a good little combination. It's like, uh, I don't know, I just really enjoy like, that you can like almost hear, like you're saying, like your influences of like you like hip hop in, in yeah. your music. Yeah, I'm honestly like a um, lot of big influences were like 2000s, like male singers, actually, Dude, like Usher's a big one. I love 2000s hip hop, it's my favorite yeah. thing to listen to. I mean, like at a party, like 2000s and today, like all of the Y2K mm-hmm. music. I just think, um, I honestly like we can go into it, but yeah. like it's an untapped like thing to like kind of it's it's that generation that mm-hmm. is like we're transitioning out of into like new things. And so it's like it feels like preservation, yeah. you know, to mm-hmm. kind of represent the, those influences. Yeah. My childhood, like it's like, you know, yeah. we're the voices of like the older generation yeah, I, now. No, you know? Yeah. <laughs> Like, oh my God, what am I going to do with that? Um, yeah. Keep it alive. Let yeah. them know. Let them know exactly. that it was the best. Ex- it is. That our childhoods were full of mystical Dude. wonder. Dude. I feel like... Yeah, I it- think that uh, no other generation had such um, psychedelic, trippy... Like, all the stuff that was created for us as kids were like 70s yeah. like adults. Like, yeah. people raised them that were like Freaking. probably doing drugs yeah. and Dude, stuff all th- while they're creating yeah. these scripts and ideas. Well, it's like uh, <laughs> Dr. Seuss and shit. That, mm-hmm. that was all... He was all tripping on acid and stuff. And then, All like the television yeah. and like just... Yeah, I don't know. No, that whole... Yeah, no, exactly what you're talking about. <laughs> that whole fucking generation. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways. Anyways. But so then uh, I'm sure you're, you're like the people that you listen to or just inspirations. Is it pretty, pretty diverse? Oh yeah. Like, honestly, I feel like it's not a matter of like, I can't even, I think it's the first time I've ever like talked, I haven't talked about this in a while, but I think I figured it out (laughs) for myself at least Mm -hmm. is that like, I can't like listen to people's music and be inspired in a way that's like, oh, I want to sound like them or I want to mm. do what they're doing. I don't feel like that's what, Im- like, who influences me to me- make music, like, the- is who I listen to. Like, who, like, makes me feel like myself mm. as, like, creator. Mm. It's not so much, like, who do I want to sound like that already exists. Yeah, yeah. It's like, no, like, how, what music do I listen to to make me feel like myself mm. and tap into that's, the, that's, that's, like, authentic creativity. Yeah, I didn't even think about it like that. But there's certain songs that, like, I know that are, like, my go... Or, like, mm-hmm. I don't know, I, like, I love Tracy Chapman, uh, Fast yeah. Car. Like, just certain, love like... that song, Like, too. you know what I mean? Nostalgic, almost songs. That, yeah. Uh, yeah that, and, like, so especially with, like, 2000s. And then with 2000s, it was, like, you were still close enough to what, like, if we were born in the 90s, you're still close enough to, like, go back, listen to the 70s, you know, 60s, 50s, where I feel like nowadays... I don't know what I mean, maybe kids totally. are still listening, but you know what I mean? We it was still within our range back with growing up versus now I feel like it's just so much stuff's being pumped out that I think it also is like kind of where I get the whole transition from pop to hip hop and how things have like fused now to where there's these elements are popping up everywhere and mm-hmm. like it's all a blend of different elements inspired from like trap. Like there's trap pop songs yeah. like Ariana Grande yeah. will have like a yeah, break know exactly like, you know what I mean about. so yeah sometimes I'm like what is going uh, on <laughs> yeah and then like rap solo Ariana be rapping yeah and, yeah, like, she you know, will. yeah she will sorry I'm name dropping because I'm a big fan <laughs> like I listen to all your songs it's like it. yeah it's like, well um, she's a big fan of Real Talk and Whatnot so. <laughs> oh good <laughs> and I'm sure <laughs> No, but yeah, so I mean, Ariana, huh? You like Ariana Grande? I mean, she's just kind of my, the I feel like a relatable, like, version of what pop music yeah. is and has transformed throughout yeah. her, even her Dude, own yeah, career, like, her, like, transformed to be. When she first, or when the first song mm-hmm. I heard with her compared to like now, it's like. And you can even see it with like Rihanna, like, what yeah. was 
R and B, hip hop back in 2008, Disturbia yeah. and like boom, all these other yeah, boom, like boom, beats boom, and stuff, yeah. so like club music. Yeah. you know that's, that was like 2008, 2013. Like yeah, that, that, though that I music. think about these <laughs> things about how it's just like what is like. How, what is genre even, you know? And yeah, so, that's And true. so it's just like, how how can you even be derivative? Like, everything's been done before. So why are you looking for yeah. what specifically going out? You Even what you come up with has probably been done before, even if it's like, you know, straight from your yeah. creative depths of your soul. Like, you're but, still uh, going to... It's good. It's all the same elements that people are putting together. pretty monumental was when... Uh, who was it? It was... Uh, Nelly and uh, was it Garth? Not Garth Brooks. <laughs> you remember about the, the country o- grammar? <laughs> yeah, it was like over and over again that song. Oh yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. You know, remember that? That was like oh the first time gosh. I felt like hip hop and country ever. Like, oh, that's what. Yeah, that was I mean? real. That, that was, was a like, real moment. Yeah, exactly. Who was it? Was it Kenny Chesney or something? You know, I'm really bad at that, but um, I'm really bad at it was that. Nelly that, for sure. That era. <laughs> Yeah. I can't. I can't Tim McGraw. I should know that. Oh yeah, he was. He was the, the champ, the OG, yeah. the goat. I guess, <laughs> so to speak. <laughs> exactly. And then so I wonder what farm people call think of the goat. And think oh, of, a Garth Brooks. I think that's. Yeah. I think that's their go. It's one of them. At least I'm a. I love Toby Keith. You ever listen to Toby Keith? <laughs> he has like a... Well, it's different. I'm not here to minimize that community. Oh, no, no, I specifically I want to know what like what cowboys are listening to. Oh, you know yeah, I, mean? no. I listened to this cowboy rap the other day that I had never heard like of. Like Johnny Cash and all yeah, that, you yeah. know? Oh, yeah, yeah. So there's like, it, you can just... Back to what we're talking about is like everything's been done. Mm-hmm. There's so much, and you can't. What is genre when it comes to? Yeah, and then before the podcast, we're talking about like just be your. Are we talking about like basically like you, people try to like copy somebody or do another style, but in reality, it's just like just be yourself. No one wants the fake version. Like be your raw self because. Mm-hmm. At the end of the day, if you want people to connect with you, you'd rather have them connect with you as a person, not you fucking, you know what I mean, as. So artists that I listen to to mm-hmm. tap into myself, I really am a big fan of uh, Quang Bin, which is uh, a trio, a psychedelic like band. Um, I don't know if I'm saying it correctly, but their name means airplane and they travel worldwide and really give me like global inspiration like they're translating like it's like i don't know you'll have to check them out yeah um, what, what was their name again it's it's uh a crank crank no, <laughs> i call them crank bin mm-hmm. but it's probably like something with like a like a maybe like a german mm-hmm. like accent mm-hmm. gotcha. I, I don't know like some like i don't know so i don't i'm probably not saying it right but it means airplane and I'm a big fan of their songs because they kind of take me on a journey. Mm-hmm. I feel like through all the places they've been that's and stuff cool. that channels in their music. So that's kind of cool. Yeah. Um, other stuff, like, I don't know. I like listening to old school, like 90s R&B. There's still so much I haven't uncovered. Um, so there's a lot of vocalists in there that I'm trying, like, I'm, like, just recently familiarizing mm-hmm. myself with because... Um, yeah, it's just some worlds you don't dive into yeah. until certain moments of time people have to like show you yeah. or like just the world has to, you know. I always think like how like if like anything was different about any day, like that wouldn't have led you to like whatever good thing that ended up coming. You know what I mean? Like I feel mm-hmm. like every, like if you like, you know, you have a bad show, get denied something, uh, like lose your job, whatever. Like it all ends up leading to something better. I mean, mm-hmm. not always, you know what I mean? But I feel like if you can't see the good things that are happening afterwards, then mm-hmm. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, I don't know. What kind of artists do you listen to? Uh, what are your big ones? Uh, I mean... I, I like Tyler Childers or Childers. Oh, I played some of his yeah, songs. I like his music a lot. Um, he's really good. Yeah, he's really good. Then who do I like? I mean, I like a variety. I just have to go to my spot. I like Freddie Gibbs a lot. You listen oh, to Freddie Gibbs? Yeah. Freddie Gibbs that is sick. album was super awesome. Oh, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and then, oh, dude, do you hear Lloyd Banks' new album? Mm-mm. 
it's surprise. Like, I'm not surprisingly good, but it's it's good. It's like Freddie Gibbs is on a song too. It's you got to check it out because it's just like his first album from like since 2010 or something. Oh my gosh, that's exciting. Yeah. And then uh, I don't know, just like yeah, you just your typical 2000s and and stuff like all those bands. I like some country music. I like some folk music. J. Cole, all that type of music, but yeah, for sure, me too. I, yeah, I like probably, everything. Yeah, exactly. I, it's just like I don't, I don't discriminate. I like oldies, are like uh, or I think mm. one of my fiance's song or at, at our wedding, mm. we uh, our song is gonna be "Beast of Burden" by Rolling Stones, mm. our first dance. But I just love, very I love, tasteful. Yeah, I just love that song. Like I didn't, and a lot of these songs that you're saying, like I didn't hear that song until like right before I met her. But it was just like one of those things I just randomly came upon it. Just very. That's awesome. Yeah. Oh, that's special. <laughs> yeah. I love wedding music. Yeah, I like I like wedding music now because it's like a taste of the couple. Mm-hmm. Versus back in the day, it was like, here comes the bride. You know what I mean? Like, it's a little more substantial. Yeah, yeah. exactly. And so w- w- what is your creative process like? Like, how do you, you know, how does, this, does a song just come to you? Just messing around, something happens? How does your... I guess like I... I haven't, not sure if I've ever discovered an actual go-to formula Mm -hmm. for songwriting. I know a lot of people that can put themselves to work and stuff like that. But um, I feel like if you're not, like anyone can like write. And if you like to write and tell stories and make things up and stuff, like that's cool. I don't really like, I'm not so much that type of songwriter. I haven't tapped into that where I'm making anything up. I kind of am like... It takes a lot of time for me to like have a have something to say about things, mm-hmm. you know, like, um, because I'm like I don't like to be hasty and mm-hmm. I don't like to do things like I've put songs out that I just like didn't really find true purpose in having it and like I've taken them like down mm-hmm. like. Literally, like just because it's like it's all it all comes down to like me and it, and what like how what I want to get out of the creative process. Mm -hmm. So um, a lot of times I'll just be kind of like unwinding and playing some piano, um, finding chords and melodies that stick. And usually sometimes like words will just like find their way to fit if I have something on my thoughts or whatever. And I kind of like just like to get myself in just like a zone where I'm just playing just because I love to, you know, Mm -hmm. not like playing and being like, oh, something's got to stay. If I ever I get frustrated or anything, I just have to like put it away. Yeah, just like it's just like it's not a, like I'm not here. I'm here to fulfill like and create joy. I'm not necessarily here to labor myself into mm-hmm. sharing something. Yeah, that I'm not ready to. Yeah, you know? that's true. So yeah, it's kind of like my sacred space. Mm-hmm. It's like a sacred thing to me. Is Kind of like your is it what like, I make, you know, and what I offer people. It's kind of like mm-hmm. your creative offering should be seen as something like, you know, really special and intimate to you. So that's kind of why, like, I do all my own stuff, mm-hmm. and I like to, I like to be really hands on with everything yeah. that I do because it's my baby. It's yeah. my identity. It's like my safe place for myself that I created. You know. Yeah. And so, are you hands on doing every single thing with uh, your music? Um, pretty much. Yeah. I've asked for like some input and I've had support, um, just some creative support. I'm, I usually welcome creative support and Mm -hmm. it usually ends up backfiring on me. Um, so I'm getting, trying to get better at knowing what doors to open, Mm -hmm. what doors to not open. That's the process everyone, maybe they don't talk about it, but they realize that they, you know, Mm -hmm need to figure out their own like artistic yeah. boundaries and everything. So no, that's, that's for sure. Things you, happen. With everything, I think too. Just yeah, cause, like, in life. <laughs> well, no, yeah. And like, I, like uh, I was talking with my buddy and he was telling me like, you never like, you should always surround yourself with people like who like want, want to see you get better and stuff like that. But like when you come, start coming with like uh, maybe other singers, other musicians, other photographers, other videographers, sometimes there'll be like ones that like, they want they they they're okay with you being there, but they don't want you to get better than them or something like that. You know what I mean? There's like a weird animosity when it's just like, no, everyone should just go be, mm-hmm. be the best that you can be. But every now and then, there's like somebody who likes like it's like you can you kind of get that vibe, and you're like, well, I don't want to be around people who are 
yeah trying to make this a competition or trying, like a because I'm, I'm kind of like it makes me sad because like i have to i feel like i have to overcompensate at that point to make them feel comfortable yeah like with like yeah. and then it, me being a successful person like i can't talk about it yeah. or i don't i i sh i have to have a certain disposition about mm. it because people will be super quick to say that i'm like like rude or whatever mm. or like i'm just like no i'm just I'm at work. Like, this yeah. is my work. Like, this is, like, I take this, I take myself, like, seriously in a different space mm -hmm. than what people may, like, know. Yeah. You know, I'm Not kind totally. of clocked in versus mm -hmm. clocked out kind of situation. But um, I feel like I have, like, a really strong, like, understanding with um all of like my fans mm -hmm. and like I feel like they I've just been genuine and I keep it real on my mm -hmm. like I do what I want and yeah. like I'm you're yourself yeah I'm not like that's my brand yeah I was like oh, what's up like I'm not here to like sell like anything in a package like if you're either here for well mm -hmm. you're here like you're either here or you're not and like yeah. why do I need to like make myself like you know I know what you mean <laughs> And then, so we kind of talked about it earlier, but why, why do you think like the, for so long, like the Central Valley didn't have like almost like wasn't a community based area. It didn't seem like we had like any type of, a, of a artist movement, uh, you know, on all ends, whether that's photography, hey. uh, you know, actual artists, rappers, you know what I mean? But why do you think like now, I, you're like, right, I, you're talking like it seems now more than ever that we're like, it, there, it is mm -hmm. coming to be something. I, what do you what do you want like uh, just like why do you think it now like what it's, it's social media hands down yeah. it's like people can see what's out there and see what's not there and see mm -hmm. what there's a need for and see you youtube and everything brought everything to life where people and then they were the first people to like create a way to make it sustainable income like based with ad revenue and stuff so like it's hands down social media i think that that um, and like encouraged and empowered a lot of people to take things into their own hands and um, yeah, find their niche, yeah. I guess. No, exactly. And then I, and what? there was all these, and then of course there's ample amounts of platforms and incentives to um, do that, you know, um, it's and, completely changed like our society yeah, that, and I think our true. creative society, especially. No, that's true. Honestly, it, I haven't heard that answer. I've asked like multiple other people this question. And what? They didn't say anything about no, 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 technology. Well, I or guess. Anything? Well, I guess I might have phrased it a little differently, but it was something like, "Why do you think we we're lacking in the in the movement?" Basically, I guess. Like, why do you think for such a long time, like there was a Bay Area movement? You know, there was like a movement in LA, but like, why? I why, mean, why, people weren't listening to our artists. You know what I mean? I, I guess I can see what you mean, but I honestly feel like that they've had huge impacts on the music industry. Since the beginning, mm -hmm. since the beginning of the music industry, mm -hmm. um, they've these, these strong city centers and the West Coast, like, yeah, were really active. I think it's just a matter of, I, I think okay, so I like I guess there's a second part of my answer mm -hmm. is like with social media, I guess like streaming and mm -hmm. accessibility to music, mm -hmm. like maximize. Like I didn't have to pay physical dollars for every yeah, song that I, I listened to, to. every song I'd ever heard wasn't dependent on how much money I had in for my pocket necessarily yeah. they found a way to allow us to support yeah you it, know I mean I'm not saying I agree with like the no, I get it, though, revenue no. like situation there but um yeah like I have access to every and YouTube and yeah, everything exactly. like you know you have access to any song in the world pretty much yeah for free yeah, YouTube, you know what I mean. Just watch accessibility. I don't. Maybe they're you. Maybe I think artist communities thrived, but they grew from organically, like from within and outwards, mm -hmm. to where people were inspiring other people and their crew and their mm -hmm. neighborhood or in their you know state or mm -hmm. you know. Um, and then now with social media, but now it's just like a straight shot to mass media. Yeah. Well, if you're in the, we all have a platform in the sense of like, mm -hmm. if you have Instagram, like you have a, you have a platform for yourself that's mm -hmm. like engaging and everything that you right. can ask for. Honestly, yeah. Like Instagram was just my, was just, has, is, I've had it since I was like 14. Yeah. Same account. Like, 
It's hella old yeah, I, I, I mean, I've cleaned everything up and like I have. archived all the stuff that doesn't need to be on there from when I was a child. Uh-huh. <laughs> Dude, so my, I like a like two and a half, three years ago, I lost like access to my Instagram. I can't couldn't get back in it because it was with the old email. Happen. But yeah, but like so like I have all these old pictures that I would probably like want deleted, but they're just you know over here in this in in my other account, and then I have my whole new account. But I'm just like, whatever. Oh I mean, goodness. it just like when I was a kid. That's so fresh. Oh, just it, like a little. It's like when I was like 13. I don't mean, know, 14, yeah, 14, yeah. 15. You know what I mean? It's just like, I'm like, what was I posting here? <laughs> <laughs> don't want to know. Yeah, exactly. No, but uh, so if you could be front row at any concert of anyone, dead or alive, mm. who would it be? Or you can name a couple for all I care. Mm. Um. <laughs> <laughs> Gordon Ramsay, <laughs> <laughs> Bernie Sanders, and finally, uh, my favorite celebrities are not musicians. Oh uh, no, Stevie Wonder. Oh, that's a good answer. It was easy. Mm-hmm. But I like right now. I'm like set on like. All these other people that are celebrities that well, people yeah. are that aren't icons. I'm mm-hmm. just like <laughs> Bernie Sanders helped me be who I am today. <laughs> Help me say, use my voice. Yeah. And, uh, Gordon like Ramsay a, helps me feed myself and nourish my life with yeah, joy. <laughs> dude, and he's like, it's like one of those things where I felt like when I was little, it's not that I didn't like Gordon Ramsay, but like I just saw him as like a guy who yelled. You know what I mean? But like the older I get, I'm like, like. He's a G. Yeah, he is. Mm-hmm. And then did you? I saw this one episode where like they're doing some uh, like bake off thingy, and the guy was like, oh, "I'm gonna make your dish," and he was like, "Are you fucking kidding me? Like mm-hmm. that, that, this I, is gonna take a it's supposed to take like twelve hours. Blah, yeah. blah, blah. you have an hour." And then he was like, "This is fucking brilliant." <laughs> like, he was, like, <laughs> it, like the guy was hella crying, and I was like, "I don't know why I'm so emotional watching this." But, like, <laughs> this is like if Gordon Ramsay <laughs> said that I I tagged him in my tic, one of my TikToks. I was like, look at my egg. <laughs> <laughs> did you see what his daughter did to him with a water bottle? She like did a thing where she like sque- like put an egg on the water bottle and then like went like this and she like looked at it and then she squeezed like water in his face and then slammed an egg on his head. <laughs> I was oh like, my gosh. <laughs> and I was that's like, how to prove he's nice. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Well, that's just like. No, I'm just saying I watched kid. everything he ever created and like all of his stuff with his family was super sweet. Mm-hmm. Raising turkeys and stuff. Mm-hmm. I like when I like when it's like the chefs and just themselves, you know what I mean? Or like when they're like showing you how to cook something with like no one around. Yeah. Because you kind of get to see their personality a little yeah, more. Because you can own. tell when some were like nice. like not genuine and yeah. other, but like when Ramsey he just has like all this like random knowledge and advice. It's like Anthony Bourdain too. Like love them. Mm-hmm. They have the best shows. Yeah, travel. He brought in like the travel element, super hardcore for me, and always growing up, Anthony. So food and traveling is like. I'm I'm about it. Mm-hmm. That's like my other Dude, like my love, big passions. <laughs> and where uh where do you think like some of the best food is? Where places you've traveled? Oh, Mexico for Mexico. sure. Mexico, uh huh. Definitely, just everything is fresher than you can oh, get anywhere yeah. else. You know, and mm-hmm. done and prepared in a way that is you know just real, like indigenous, like and mm-hmm. like local, like or just cult, just like people's own home family recipes mm-hmm. so everything you try has its own flair and different flavors and stuff mm-hmm. so like because you know those families like they take pride in like the way that they do their tacos and yeah. the way that they do their things and so just being able to try everything and like just have so many different varieties of like kind of similar dishes sometimes mm-hmm. but like it's always a unique experience and you can always make it crazier yeah or, you know mm-hmm. it just getting there's no limits i feel like so mm-hmm. that's my favorite no yeah i also love any type of eastern dish as mm-hmm. well like i love vietnamese food yeah and, oh my god i fucking love Vietnamese. and food. i'll tear mm-hmm. it up at an indian buffet or yeah. something like that <laughs> like i'll tear that my, up my cousin's been living in vietnam like he moved there like oh in, that'd be so crazy yeah he, he moved there he in like there. february right before the pandemic happened and then 
it was like locked down there, but he like went to teach English. And so he's just been Perfect. teaching English and, and that place never really shut down. So like, it's just so funny. Cause like That's during crazy. everyone's quarantine, he was just like at the, like, you know, at the clubs in Vietnam, just like, like it never wow. shut down ever. It, it was, it was, I mean, I was like, dude, like if you pick any good time to go to like a country, that's like, I guess, you know what I mean? Like, I I feel like I should know the facts on that. I don't know how many people died over there. Oh no, yeah, I know that. But I'm just saying. Bad. No, I'm not <laughs> saying that. But I'm just saying in the sense that's of uh, like compared. I, like I'm not saying that the shutdowns weren't bad or anything. You know what I mean? But I'm saying like rest like, in peace to all the people <laughs> yes. that were affected by COVID nineteen. Yes. I don't know if anyone's ever like really like honored their names or anything. I just want to say like man. Rest in peace to those people and much love to everyone's families. The scariest time in COVID, I felt like, was uh, like it's when, like, everyone, it was like the first couple of days when no one knew what was going on. I remember I came home from, I used to work at Rivets in Modesto. Mm -hmm. And so uh, I came home from Rivets and I went to, and I lived in Turlock for like past like three or four years. And uh, I came home and I went to Food for Less because like I heard like the shutdown was happening. And then like on their, their wall, it was like, uh, we will be shut down for like the next seven days, blah, blah, blah. And I was like, oh, what? Like, that's like the first time it like hit me that it was like, oh, this is fucking for real. But then mm -hmm. it was like two days later, it was like the New York hospitals. Remember they put everyone on ventilators and stuff? And like, there was just, I remember like a lot of people passed away, but they just did mass burial sites mm -hmm. in the yeah. ground. I just remember like, that's something that I was like, what? Like, I've never seen yeah. like anything like that. Like, yeah, Tragic. it was just so sad. But that was like Insanity. This, yeah. I think um, I can see why the insanity has been minimized because people would probably go crazy if oh, they yeah. actually, like, were actually t processing the multitude of everything. Mm -hmm. But it's heavy. And, yeah. you know, we'll, one, we'll honor. I feel like it'll be honored. Mm -hmm. It will know? be. Um, but, yeah. Um, lucky him for being able to chill in Vietnam during yeah, COVID. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Eat some yeah. soup. Yeah, he was just always like on a beach. And I was like, man, hey, you do you. But then, uh, so what What? What song do you think has been like recognized the most out of your fans or have you got the most feedback from? I don't know, because it's like hard. <laughs> I'm sorry, I can't just answer the question. No, you're good. Go it's ahead. It's hard to determine like, you know, why certain things like whether it's just timing or whether it's um, the song or anything about the song itself necessarily, but, or just the fact that I had the, the time frame of when it was released, but I released episodes EP right when the pandemic started. Mm -hmm. So um, it was kind of just like, I've been thinking about it. I was, I ideally would have wanted to like do a different, like a promotional rollout and like hype it up a long ways before releasing it. But everything was all happening at once and I didn't really know how to process mm -hmm. or plan that kind of thing out, but I had it ready. And, um, and I just kind of threw it out there. And um, so there was a lot of different elements at play as to like why um, those songs are like, I got a lot of more people listening into my music during the pandemic because mm. um, I had released that and it was a pandemic and yeah. um, it circulated and got onto a lot of playlists, oh, that's you know, sick. during during the pandemic. So everyone's just like, has, you know, everything yeah. was just like, took a shift inward, you know, and people were like, so yeah, my um, episodes EP and uh, the song episodes, um, probably circulated the most and um it's it's um it's one of my more favorite songs i just i'm i play it in the future yeah, <laughs> yeah i'm gonna yeah. play it for you yeah exactly exactly and then uh so i mean that song and then do you feel like through the pandemic like you said it circulated a little more and so did i mean obviously like uh so w did you try to do anything during the pandemic in the I sense was, of uh working from home I was yeah, like at home stuck so I did a lot of stuff uh during the pandemic I was um engaging my Patreon and mm. like I was building a merch store and I also took I think I think now that I think about it I took a lot of time off um social media 
during all of the um, tragic things happening, mm-hmm. um, like George Floyd and Breonna mm-hmm. Taylor. And um, yeah, that was a all and local things mm-hmm. and all the, yeah. the election and everything. Oh. So, so I think it was just kind of like one of those things. Mm-hmm. Um, so I wasn't really trying to be do any type of self promotion mm-hmm. during that time. Like, but you um, were just like working on, uh, I was, um, kind of just like. Uh, working remotely and trying to find a way to survive because I couldn't play gigs. Mm-hmm. So I didn't know what I was going to do for work. Um, yeah. So like just the whole economic like mm-hmm. flip and being at home all the time and adjusting to that emotionally. And um, so I took a lot of time off social media and I was definitely not going to do any self-promotion during that mm-hmm. time. I it was read, I read a lot of black literature mm-hmm. and stuff. Um purchased from a lot of like local black owned mm-hmm. like black owned mm-hmm. um businesses and um just tried to like educate myself and like have conversations a lot during that time yeah um and then you know people were vibing out to some playlists i got to do a lot of cool live streams that were awesome oh, yeah, and then it was cool. just like oh like digital content is super cool how you can circulate it so easily and um live streams and stuff throughout my Instagram um, hiatus. Um, After my Instagram hiatus, when I was coming back to social media, live streams were a great way for me to engage new people and record some videos Mm -hmm. and um, still performed a little bit at some weddings and here and there and stuff. But um, yeah, episodes EP and that song definitely... um, I think it's I think that was the song that really like made me realize that the music that I had written within that time frame had actually like all had like a story mm-hmm. together and everything. Yeah. So sometimes you just need to like let things like simmer with time, yeah. not be too hasty and be like, I'm gonna make this album and drop yeah. this album. Like I was building those songs. I produced every song, mm. like all the instrumental That's sick. um on that EP. So it was like um and earlier you were took saying a long time. About, you had to settle with them for a you while. You played piano, right? Or like mm-hmm. so, what, yeah, you it's play a like a life, lo- been a lifelong process. Uh-huh. But I'm not like a pianist. Yeah. Um. But, but I mean, you do you like? Uh, I mean, you play with a lot of instruments, or? Oh yeah, like um, my EP is like tons of different instruments and loops I build, mm-hmm. or um. You do your drums with like a little pad. Um, I think I use a lot of keypads mm-hmm. and I used um like logic drummer mm-hmm. and like stuff a lot a little to assist me, but like a lot of organic like snaps. Mm-hmm. My first oh. CP, I didn't have any software to work with. I recorded bad CDP in my closet with GarageBand. Mm-hmm. And so I used um a lot of different stuff. Like I like I used a ukulele as like a drum and I oh. I drum on my guitar now because it kind of reminds me of those days yeah. that I'd be doing percussion on my guitar or I snap a lot and do a lot of background layers and harmonies and stuff to like add um different instruments you know mm-hmm. what i mean like i sing them you know mm-hmm. so to speak um but yeah i try to yeah i like i like to produce sound yeah. and produce music and stuff it's pretty fun no i like yeah there's no limits you can record anything and flip it and have something totally unique and everything so i feel like yeah that was another big reason why um people liked the episode DP was just because it was um um not it was well, it was my first not like acoustic project. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, okay. And so everything, and everybody that, was like, "Oh, what's this?" So like everybody was listening, like, "Oh, what's she doing now?" And mm-hmm. and everything prior to that was all acoustic. Especially, yeah. Um, if you listen, like my my earlier stuff, I was just recording myself with my guitar most of the time. Mm-hmm. Um, I kind of was was dipping my, getting my feet wet in production. Um, so you can hear it on a couple of the tracks mm-hmm. where I did incorporate some keyboard and stuff and um, different like beats and stuff. So, mm-hmm. um, but that was when I was just getting started. And then I did a whole project. The whole EP was all composed by me and mm-hmm. created by me. Um. And yeah, there's some bangers on it. No. Yeah. 
And some bars on it too. <laughs> oh, some bars. Yeah, I just put some bars. What's the first album that like you ever remember like just listening to? Like when you were a kid, like, you know what I mean? Like on repeat. Or a few of them. The like, first one I remember listening to like as albums, like the first time I started buying CDs or like listening to CDs. Sorry. First time I was like um, listening to a lot of albums um, and had like a boom box and a CD player of my own so I can actually like listen, explore mm-hmm. my own like tastes and stuff. I remember listening to Emancipation of Mimi by Mariah Carey <laughs> over and over again because I got it as a gift. And, um, yeah, and it's she could it. sing. Yeah. Um, and I, I love all those songs. It was very 2000s. Mm-hmm. Um I grew up listening to some Gwen, Gwen Stefani. Oh, I had yeah. her like albums or whatever, but like I loved Usher and um unfortunately like a lot of like my influences, like I only knew them through their hits because they're stuff I've like uncovered like on my own. So I haven't like dived in and like discovered like their real the real like mm-hmm. shit, you know? Yeah, yeah. Um but um Immense, uh, miseducation of uh, Lauren Hill mm-hmm. for sure. Um, well, like I said, like anything that makes me feel like inspired or just mm-hmm. create, just like myself, and that can change, you know. So yeah. it's like hard to say, like, well, um, but as a kid, um, uh, everything was just like on the radio and yeah. stuff. Like I didn't really like, yeah. I remember I found out what a, what a tape, like you could record with a tape oh, yeah. on, on a boombox mm-hmm. or whatever. And this was like, you know, early 2000s. And I was like, this is amazing. You could just have any song you want on a tape. And like, now, I remember that. now it's uh, like you're yeah. like 15 bucks a month and you have any song in the world. Dude, I'm kind of like into the CD aesthetic. <clears throat> and they're super like bad for the environment, right? So like either recycling them and making dope art with them because mm-hmm. you can um, but I want a CD collection. I have a vinyl collection. I want oh, a CD collection. Cool. I was thinking and about, have a boombox. That'd be sweet. It's it's crazy how like CDs, tapes, albums, like tapes are pretty much gone, gone in the sense of people don't generally. They keep, don't sound. Yeah, very no, exactly. Good. Where like a record still sounds good. You amazing. know what I mean? Yeah, amazing. But it's it's so weird. But then then like it's like DVDs, Blu-rays. Remember, I thought and VHSs. I thought DVDs are for sure gonna stick around. And then I was like, oh, like, streaming. Yeah, yeah, like nothing. I mean, streaming on everything. Music still has that little more. People don't go out and buy movies as much as they they'll go out and buy an album still. If you like really like the artist, you know what I mean. I feel like people still go out. Although they buy the record, you know. What I'll I mean? buy a record, you know what I mean? depending on if there's skips or not. If there's no skips, you gotta have no skips. What does that mean exactly? Like I don't, you can't like go and skip a song on a record. Oh, okay. So I feel like records, you should know like what vibe you're looking for and like, um, something that you like truly love. You I know? have Kid Cudi's uh, "Man on the Moon." Yes, and like that—that that one's like a whole because it's like, meant to be listened to and all, like that. Yeah, exactly. Like you're saying, and like, and that's what I guess it's kind of what you're saying too, in the sense of like everything spliced mm-hmm. on everything else. Yeah, yeah, like sometimes it just will like be like others. Those are the vinyls are the true only the, the only way to create the whole sonic experience of what they're trying to create, which sometimes isn't music. You know, mm-hmm. like listen to Kendrick Lamar's Good Kid, Mad yeah. City on vinyl. That's the one. Because you hear like the whole, all the transitions going that to where they sense. go and like all the dialogue. And it's it's like, and I saw him in concert and uh-huh. it's like, it's a, it's a nonstop stream of different stuff that, yeah. Well, and just like Amazing. Kendrick's songs are so, you know, I'm like halfway through the song, it'll basically change to another song, you know? Mm-hmm. Sometimes like that, but I'm sure on a, Vinyl, it, you know, it, yeah, yeah it you're saying does. like the stops mm-hmm. and everything are like it's the way you're more, supposed to listen. Yeah, to I know, it. man. I gotta start listening to more stuff like that. But that's like what I noticed with the kids. But if you're like, one. yeah, if you're digitizing things, they could just it's, you can't have a nonstop album. I don't know. Maybe there's some platforms that would do it, but that mm-hmm. don't splice it. That, but it's like a lot. Like it'd be a big chunk of yeah, it'd be a lot um, of uh, rather than a press. Yeah, mm-hmm. but. I love records. Into that for sure. I want to start actually DJing and oh, okay. uh, figuring. That'd be cool. Diving in there. That'd be amazing. You'd be a good DJ. 
Thanks. I mean, I know I do a lot of, I mix and mash a lot of songs mm-hmm. together already. Oh. Um, so I wouldn't be afraid. It's just a matter of, it's just a technical like sk- mm-hmm. like practice, you know, different instruments. And uh, yeah, that'd be exciting. We'll have to learn the ins and outs to that. Mm-hmm. It'd be fun. Do some vinyl or do do shows or whatever. It'd yeah. be fun. Sing over some that would be sick too, yeah. Just Sing mixing some everything, hooks, yeah. yeah. And a little loop it and shit. That'd be mm-hmm. sick. And then what's the best advice you've ever been given? <laughs> <laughs> um hmm. <laughs> um I was kind of like I was kind of lonely <laughs> one day. And uh this is this lady was super like she was actually like I'm not gonna say old, but like she was um probably like in her sixties. Mm-hmm. Um, but I could tell she was mature. Mm-hmm. Um and she said <laughs> fuck a lot of men as many as you want as many as you can don't ever just sing with just one (laughs) (laughs) is this some random lady that told you this too yeah (laughs) yep she was just like especially when you're young like embrace it all like live it up People feel super underindulged by mm-hmm. life and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's a interesting piece of advice for sure. I feel like that's the best one. It stuck with me the most. Yeah, and I'm sure just like uh, that moment, like it's one of those things too, where it's like you just happen to be walking wherever you were walking at the same <laughs> time as that woman. I had never, I, mean? I would have <laughs> never, no one had ever said anything like that, like to me ever and it like meant more it meant so much more than what she was actually saying Mm. it just meant more it's just like just go live yeah Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) no no yeah I didn't interpret I wasn't you know I don't know I wasn't doing that necessarily but no no I got you I got you it was uh I feel like she was meaning, like, don't let anything hold you back. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But she was just saying it into, you know, that's maybe like, something that happened like to her that hint. day, you know, she needed to get that advice to somebody. <laughs> uh, it was pretty random, like, ooh. But we were hanging out and talking, kind of having drinks together mm-hmm. at a oh, certain okay. point. Yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. Getting so, to know each other a little bit more and more. Yeah, sure. She felt comfortable. She had some wine or something. <laughs> no, that's cool. And then so you really so you released the episodes last one, like February then? March. March. It was like literally like, oh, like right March into thirty first or uh, Sorry. I need to sit back. No, you're good. All right. It was like March twenty second or something. Oh. Nice. And then so uh you so you've been working on anything or you got Um yeah, I'm still writing songs. I wrote I wrote a couple songs that I I still kind of like listening to and working out um in Mexico when I was in Mexico. Mm-hmm. So um it was just kind of nice. I was just like relaxed and had an open mind kind of and so like it was just kind of easy and nice to just like write things out sometimes it's hard to like I didn't like sit down I had some things on my mind like some lines going Mm -hmm. through my head and like little things repeating in my head that I wanted to just like okay like why is this stuck in my head for some reason like um so yeah just um always just like finding time for creativity and practicing instruments and I just uh I work and I play a lot of shows and Mm -hmm. um, yeah you play shows pretty much everywhere huh yeah in the in the valley in 209 and mm-hmm. try to get at the breweries and the the cooler restaurants mm-hmm. some fine dining and then just promote um events and stuff so i get hired privately yeah, a lot based sick. off of you know what i do in mm-hmm. the public so um 
And when you're playing, you play uh, you play some of your own songs and some covers? Yeah. I just, just mix it I in? I pretty much can do whatever I want. Oh, it's pretty so, awesome. It's yeah. just because it all fits within the same, like, energy. Yeah. And, like, it so, all kind of sounds like the same vibe, you know? Mm-hmm. Like, and um, at least that's cool that you got to go play with, with, you know, what you want to. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's cool because even if I play, like, yeah, my, my own originals or covers, like, people like um, my versions of you know, the way that I arrange things mm-hmm. together and stuff. And there's a whole lot more to um, just the experience than just like what songs I choose and how I put them together, which is, you know, something that I think is unique and mm-hmm. to me. And I do music from different pockets and different genres and eras mm-hmm. that people probably wouldn't expect to hear. And I like that. So yeah. no, it's I like, like it my too. own thing. And then where can people find you at? Um, <clears throat> if you want to listen to my music, um, again, my name's Taya Noel. That's T E A for Taya and Noel. And I'll pop up there and I hope you listen to um, my latest EP episodes um, while I cook up hopefully a full length album within the next year or so. And um, just always learning more and trying to um, expand um, both personally, mentally, physically, and musically so i just give myself time and let things mm-hmm. cook um my website's uh tayanoelmusic.com and um you can follow me at taya.noel on instagram mm-hmm. and honestly you can stream my music everywhere so um i just hope that um if you, you know, come to my zone and my world and want to like chill, just like bring the good vibes, you know, to my to my page and everything. It's all love here. And um, I'm just here doing what I love and not trying to um, be anybody that, that I'm not, you know yeah. what I mean? I just hope that that <laughs> doesn't make anyone mad, you know. I dropped my phone too. Oh, nice. <laughs> I just left it down there. All right, hey, uh, I really appreciate Dude, you nice. being here. It was fun having you. I like that you got a good aesthetic too behind you on your performances. Aesthetic. And then, what song are you uh, playing on the way out? Uh, I think we're gonna do a little bit of that episodes, and I hope you enjoy it. Um, real special and personal song to me, and. Um, I invite you to uh, listen to my discography and kind of um, check out the whole journey. If you're new here, if you don't know me, you know, um, everything kind of is, um, you know, just phases of everything. So it would be cool if you if people started mm-hmm. at the beginning. No, sometimes yeah. it's a story. You see your growth and through it and yeah. everything. Um, I've been pretty much just doing this as I go. I don't really, not really know what I'm doing. So um, hope you just listen and get inspired if you feel inclined to do so. And um, thank you so much. This was such a beautiful of setup. Hey, uh, I'm going to shake some hands. Yeah, there. <laughs> you gotta teach everybody the signature real talk, whatnot. Um, oh, handshake, Let's yeah, do real talk, like a, real, yeah, exactly. Come up with yeah. one, exactly. And then you have people around the world doing it. <laughs> All right, Taya, thank you so much for being here. I Thanks. appreciate it. All righty. Let's go for another try Doesn't matter where, just some place to clear the air Talking to the stars is easier than always being wrong Signal here so I can recognize my fears There's so many parts I keep in the dark Don't want when to stop, always breaking hearts I'm always in my thoughts, they scare me a lot mm-hmm. Everywhere I go, I lead with emotion I'm the undertone in this polluted ocean Everybody knows only the calm before the storm Hope you'll never see one of my episodes We go to a replay of a cancel show I'm okay, but these days I push everyone away from my own
own sake Keeping my soul safe, yeah Hope you'll never see one of my episodes We go to a replay of a cancel show I'm okay with these days I push everyone away for my own sake Keeping my soul safe Today I was in a good mood Had no time to fool you with a smile Natural high, something got me overnight Now I'm stuck in traffic and my mind got into review Can't believe I hurt you again Can't get myself to answer your call Get my shit together and apologize And I understand that this could be the last drop But right now it's not with swallowing my pride Never the same person today and tomorrow is a different version My character is a blur to me I'll be right on target till you pull my trigger Nothing could ever stop me till you pour me liquor Convinced that the damage is on the cellular level The comes in my veins is only revealing my DNA The grip you have in place got me flying off the handle Haven't been sober in days You got me flying off the handle like Hope you never see one of my episodes I hope you never see it We go to a replay of a cancel show Cause I can never see it coming and I'm okay But I push everyone away for my own sake, yeah Keeping my soul safe Hope you'll never see one of my episodes I hope you never see it We go to a replay of a cancel show I'm okay with these days I push everyone away for my own sake Keeping my soul safe This is it. Real talk. What not? Real talk. That's it.